Hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I don't think that the camera value of the camera uh, and you're seeing my face it's uh, you're getting any value from it. So actually not include my face in the videos. Uh I don't know what do you think guys. Uh but I don't think that that's something valuable for the tutorials. So today in this today tutorial we are going to talk about when a user actually registered to your app uh, to receive the welcome email using uh, using uh, Cloud Function. You can actually do this, of course, uh, manually with the action, uh, but I would do it uh, with a Cloud Function right now. I can, do, I can show you because I think using it with a Cloud Function is better and doing it manually when you register a user. Uh, because I think, I'm not sure, but I think when you register a user, it will, the flow, the flow will actually uh, navigate to your uh, logged in page automatically. And it will not actually, uh, this was the case before, I'm not sure if it's still this the same case. Uh, it will not actually execute any of your other uh, actions in flow, the flow. So, this is the preferred way. I would do it this way. If you want to send a welcome message to your new users, this is how I'm going to use it. So I already set up a 10 minute email that will expire in seven minutes now. Uh, and let me show you what I mean. If I go back to my app, so this is my app. I'm using it in the web deployment. You can use it in task mode. Doesn't really matter. This is my 10 minutes email. This is my uh, password, which would be the same as the email. And now when I click register, I should be, uh, I should be register this user and I'm going to the logged in page. Uh, after I register the user. And now if you go back, uh, if you, if I go back to my email, which is you see that this is the same email, uh, you can actually see uh, the email that just came. Uh, so the email is from my, uh, this is a, an existing email. Uh, so please don't spam it. Uh, and it's not my email. Uh, this is the Newcastle United football fan club email. I just use that email uh, in order to send this email. Of course, you can use your email, and I'll just show you how you can do it. But you can see it's it's working. You don't see the high right now in the name, and I'll show you why. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so let me show you the actual code um, and how you can actually do this. Uh, so of course you need to use a cloud function for that. And before we dive into the actual cloud function, make sure if you don't know how to set up your cloud function to watch my video, kickstart your uh, Firebase cloud functions journey with uh, further flow step-by-step -step guidance uh, tutorial. Uh, so make sure that you watch that in order to uh, set up your cloud functions correctly. And now when you're done setting up the cloud functions, because I'm using this new functionality, I cannot actually show you. Um, I think I cannot show you my, uh, my folders, uh, but the thing is that you should have a folder called uh, functions where are stored your functions. So last time we did it, we did it with uh, we did it with a folder called Firebase, and inside this folder Firebase there is is uh, uh, there is a file. Sorry, there is a file called uh, index.js. So you, the only thing that you have to do is just open this index.js. Uh, so like I said, this should be, if I write it here, probably it will be better, Fire, Firebase, and then here you have functions. And inside these functions, you should have a file called index.js. So this is the index.js. Uh, file. Uh, like I said, we did that in the video. I already explained 
how you uh, how you do that file, and we already deployed our first cloud function. So here uh, you should actually uh, replace, so you should open this file. You can open it with any text editor that you have out there. Uh, you can open this file, index.js, and then when you open this file, make sure to replace uh, everything that is in this file. But before doing that, uh, or you can save it, yeah. Uh, and then I switch my screen, actually, I hope that works, uh, to actually show you what you have to do. So like I said, you have to see the uh, CD. I think it's all the platforms, uh, Linux, uh, Mac, and Windows. Uh, you can CD, so I will CD in Firebase. This is the name of my uh, folder called Firebase and then uh, slash and then functions. So I in CD into Firebase and now your uh, project should be uh, listed. So make sure your project is listed. So make sure you're us using the right project. So in order to check if you're using the right project, you can do it with Firebase project lists. So when you click enter here, uh, you should be able to see all your you should be able to see all your projects. So I'm not showing all my projects because there is some information that probably is not good to be public. But you can see all your projects there, and uh, you should be see you should see your active project. So make sure the active project is the one that you need uh, to be active. And then when you make sure that this is true, uh, then the first thing that we have to do. Uh, is actually install uh, the package that we are going to use from Node. Uh, so we have to have Node. I, I'm assuming that you already have Node. You can check if you have Node if you write npm dash dash version, and you should get a version number. Like in this case, I have nine six four. Okay, and now we have to install. So in order to install, we can just write. Uh, npm and then install and here we are installing node mailer so we're installing the node mailer then we have to wait a little bit great now it's installed and then when we install the node mailer then we can actually change the uh, the file so Let's do that. I did it with nano last time, uh, but you can do it with any text editor. Uh, there is a command that uh, there was a guy said, uh, what is this nano? Nano is just a text editor. It's like uh, Notepad in, um, uh, in Windows, or I'm using Sublime Text, to be honest. If you are using Sublime Text, if you have Sublime Text, uh, it's Sublime Text, and I'm using version 4. And if you're using Sublime Text, you can do something like Sublime and then index.js and it will open in Sublime. But I'm using Nano and I'm using Nano because Nano will open in the uh, terminal itself. So I'm using Nano. I can open this in Nano. Uh, and so let's open this file in Nano. If I open this file in Nano, I don't see anything right now because it's a blank new file I just created. If you see something in your file, you have something. If you have something in your file, and if you have the old cloud function that we created, you can simply delete the file uh, and then open it with Nano, or you can delete the file and then create the file again and open it with Notepad or, or and like I said, any text editor uh, that you wish. And then you can copy the code. The code will be available in my GitHub repo and in the website uh, that I am uh, providing for you guys uh, to copy and paste the code. But in my GitHub, uh, it will be available, the code there. So this is the whole code. Uh, the most important part is that about this host uh, and this port and this secure and then the, the user and then the password. So make sure you change those because this is very important. I will actually, I will actually uh, write uh, like uh, domain.com, for example, and then the port, make sure you, you use the same, you use the port 
provide by your provider. And then the security, you can do it with true because in my case, it's SSL certif certificate port. And then the user will be, in my case, it's the email. And so this is the email. And then the password is actually, you have to delete this and write your own password uh, for the email. So you can just do it like with your password. Uh, and then uh, just uh, you have to change that as well because this is uh, the 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 same email. Like I said, I'm going to uh, have this inside uh, the GitHub page that I set up, so you can actually change that uh, from there. Uh, as well. So and then we have two, and this would be the user email, uh, and which which will be taken automatically when the user is uh, registered. And then we have welcome to my app, and then it says hi, and then the user it says display name. So make sure that this display name it's changed, or you have actually take the display name of the user because because in my case i didn't take the display name of the user i only take the email and the password so in that case i don't have a display name and if i don't have a display name i'll actually end up with an empty string so you just say hi and then it says welcome to my app and so on and so forth so this is how you do it in the end you get there was uh, an error uh, while sending an email or you have welcome email sent to. When you're done, uh, we have to deploy the cloud function. Uh, so let's deploy it. We can deploy it with this text, which says Firebase deploy dash dash only functions. Uh, already, uh, we already did that in the last video when we did the setup. Then when I click enter, uh, you should be able to see your old cloud function. And usually you have cloud functions by uh, Featherflow. Uh, and yes, I got this error because of the password. Uh, because let me just show you, because I'm using this email password, uh, this email password you need to do it as a string and not like that. And I did it with a variable. Uh, that is uh, a variable from uh, Firebase, uh, but you don't need to do it. If you want to do it, I will just show you how you can do it. So you can actually do, you can actually write a password like that. So you can have like Firebase and then functions dot dot configuration dot set that email that password and then equals to your password. So in my case, this is not my password, of course. Uh, but you can write your password like that. And the reason for that is that you don't want to actually write your password inside your files because if someone get access to your computer, uh, you they will actually see uh, the password. So it's not actually good security uh, to have your password just lying there uh, inside of a file. So that's how you can do it. You can do it, like I said, you can do it as a string or you can do it this way. You can do. You can write the password over here, and when you are done, actually, I didn't switch to my project that I wanted to use. So this, I can show you how you can do that. You can do it with uh, Firebase use, and then the project uh, Firebase ID, which in my case it's better project. And then if I click Enter, I should be able to switch to this project. It says. You're not using this project, great. And now I can actually, and now I actually uh, deploy. So I can just write Firebase, and then I can write uh, deploy. And then I can only Firebase deploy only functions. I, don't, I want to only deploy the functions, and it's only one function in my case right now. So let's hit Enter. When I click Enter, it will start deploying functions and make sure in Flutterflow, uh, there, Flutterflow is actually using uh, cloud functions as well. It's automatically creating cloud functions for you and deploying them. So it will ask you, do you want to delete the cloud functions that you don't have in your computer? Uh, the default is no. So 
So just click enter. Uh, it will not delete the cloud functions. Don't click yes here, because if you click yes, it will actually delete your cloud functions and your app may not be working the way it was intended. Usually the cloud functions that Flutterflow is using is about push notifications. And also when you want to make your app because private, uh, it's used there as well. So like I said, click no, it's better. And if you want to delete the cloud function, you can actually do it uh, using the terminal itself. But let's wait a little bit to get this done. Okay, it looks done to me. So when it's done, you should be able to see this uh, message. And now you can go to the console. Let's go to the console now. And this is the console now. And you, if you go to function on the left side, you can actually see uh, the actual uh, the actual cloud functions that we created, that we just created. And now when a new user uh, register, you actually see, uh, you they will actually received an email uh, when they register. So good job to you guys. Uh, that was your first real cloud functions that you created because the last time we just created a dummy cloud function uh, in order to just test if everything is working fine. Uh, and also, before we go, I just wanted to say that uh, if you think that uh, uh, you can support my work, uh, I set up uh, this page that where you can actually support my work uh, using a monthly uh, monthly support my work or one-time support my work. So it would be actually much appreciated uh, if you think, guys, uh, that is uh, something that you can do. So thank you very much and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Take care.